Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Once again, I'm filming late um, at my parents' house. It's the last night I'm here, so we've got to keep it quiet. But just for this one final episode of Justin Hawkins Rides Again, um, today I'm talking about the most streamed song of all time, because it's just been announced. Um, and it isn't that Ed Sheeran one that it always seems to be. It's something else. What is it? I bet you can't wait to find out, can you? Well, I'll tell you, just after I've done the theme tune. Can't say fairer than that, can I? Shh. Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. Okay, so the weekend's 2019 hit, Blinding Lights, um, has officially become the most streamed song on the music streaming platform, Spotify, um, as of December the 31st, 2022. Just a quick story about Spotify. Um, once upon a time, we uh, we released an album called Pinewood Smile by the Darkness, and it was on... Uh, uh, oh, no, it was... Was it up? No, it was one before that, sorry. It was um, the, the album that was called Last of Our Kind was released on Cobalt Label Services. Brilliant people, loved them. And one day I went into um, the Cobalt offices with the band and we were like having a great chat. Yeah, going to do a record, yeah. We'll sign that, yeah, nice one. And then uh, put it out then and talking about, you know, schedules and stuff. And as I was walking out, the, the head of the label, a brilliant man, um, said to me, ah, meet Alexander, he's... Uh, the CEO, um, uh, you know, I'm not sure where he is, the CFO, he was high up anyway in Spotify. <clears throat> and he said, Spotify now has uh, uh, over 88% share of the uh, of the streaming market or something like that. And I said, oh, that's brilliant, Alexander, congratulations. And then I was leaving and I did a, I did a um, what's it called? Uh, I did a Columbo. So I was walking out and I went, ah, by the way, what is Spotify? To gales of laughter. Uh, <clears throat> actually, it didn't go down very well. Never mind. Um, so, then this Blinding Lights has 3,334,180,640 streams as of January the 3rd. <laughs> it's a ridiculous amount. Um, whenever I see numbers like that, I always imagine that somebody's gone into a coma and just before they go they sort of put blinding lights on repeat and uh, just have a long long snooze but you know I think people are actively choosing to listen to this track and we'll, we'll listen to it in a second and, and figure out why blinding lights taking the top spot on Spotify means that it has swiped the title from Ed Sheeran's Shape of You um, <laughs> love, love a little story about that one um, when we played with Ed Sheeran um Frankie's mum came and she really wanted to meet Ed Sheeran and um, she said, <laughs> she said, no, but I love his song, Shape of You. I just love it. She loved that song. Um, that was, which I think was a very reasonable uh, justification really for, for meeting Ed Sheeran. Why this song, I wonder? Let's have a look at some comments. Um, Colin Z said, um, this makes me want to cruise around a city Singing, dancing, wearing a suit, and at night. Um, a question mark says this song gives me so much energy, but I'm just sitting down, so I'm just buzzing. I, I did cover a weekend song once a long time ago. None of you guys watched it because it, who cares, you know? Um, but it was like it, to me, it just sounded like the arse end of a, an unwanted. Uh, Michael Jackson chorus repeated with uh, a bloke doing some half-assed lyrics. I was nicer than that about it, obviously, but, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll undoubtedly be nice about this one too. Let's have a look at Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Okay, I do know this song. Okay. This is one that um, a friend of mine who's kind of like into rock and stuff, um, was offering this as an explanation as to why everybody likes The Weeknd, even people who sort of don't listen to that kind of synth pop stuff. This is the crossover song that, that actually appeals to folk like myself who are into, you know, 
good music. <laughs> you can turn me on with just a touch, baby. Baby. Sin City's cold and empty. He, he mentions Sin City there, um, and I'm reminded of the ACDC song uh, Sin City, which I think is on Power Rage, is it? Down, 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 down. I'm going in to Sin City. I'm gonna win in Sin City. I would love to live in a world where Sin City by ACDC is the most streamed. We don't live in that world. No, I can sleep in it I feel your it's pretty cool and dated in a way because like when you see somebody with a load of blood in his mouth smoking cigarettes and stuff like that, these are all things that you would normally be told in, in the MTV generation, you know, the, the one before this. You'd be told, hey, you can't do that, you, you, they won't show it on MTV. They just won't do it. You, now no one cares, do they? Because it's all about YouTube. So you're able to do this kind of much more, it's more creative. There's more creative freedom, I think. And he's exploring that. I love the palette of his uh, sartorial ensemble. He's got the uh, black and red thing going on, which is very Michael Jackson. But it, to me, the weekend always just sounds like a bloke who's singing along with his, with his, to his Walkman or something like that. I never really hear him opening his voice up or doing anything that makes you think, "Wow, wow," you know. Sometimes there's a good groove in the music and stuff, and I understand why this one's popular. It's, it's pretty catchy, like um. So I think the key of it's probably. F sharp. But what's interesting about it is he doesn't really. He never uses the the minor third. Or the major third. So it's kind of an ambiguous melodic choices that is making. Yeah, the melodic choices that he's making there it could be either mi minor or major. Really, you could go. Like, He's not, he's just... it's, I mean, that's pretty, isn't it? And it's not obvious, you know, it's not obvious in the way that... That would be obvious. Hmm. That's where the... In, that's the interesting part of it, I think. So, in conclusion, I would say this song is it's sung by somebody who is delivering it with the gusto and panache of a person nonchalantly, you know, just singing along to their Walkman. It's really, really simple stuff. Um, and I imagine it's something that when you're preparing for a night out and you're applying, you know, your mascara or I like to put a little bit of rouge on the cheeks just to accent the cheekbones um, or um, I don't know you know when you've got that roller with the tape on it and you're taking the dog hairs off your jacket before you go out to you know um, the local uh, <laughs> I don't know, when you're preparing for karaoke or it's just something to warm the voice up and prepare you for a brilliant night on the tiles or something like that. It has all of the edge of a balloon, but there's something really charming about it as well. And the video is brilliantly acted as well. He's a great performer. And I like his spats as well. I'm looking at um, two, point, two minutes 56 into the video um, and he's wearing some patent leather spats. They used to do those uh, in the olden days, of course. It's kind of like a gangster's footwear, but also it's very much Michael Jackson. So he's got, he's got a lot of Michael Jackson vibes as well. Um, but without all that baggage. <laughs> you know what I mean. And you can whistle along to the synthesizer part as I've just demonstrated there.
lovely stuff. All right, well done the weekend. Congratulations on uh, smashing, um, s- swiping the top spot from Ed Sheeran's Shape of You. Um, it's well done. That's all I can say. Well done. Three billion and counting. Incredible stats. Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos, get some sleep. Nice one, guys. See you later.